God bless you. Welcome to Fresh Wind Show. I'm Apostle Donald Graham, and we are so excited you joined us today because we've got a topic today that I'm sure you haven't heard. And if you've heard it, I'm sure you needed some more information. And we've come to do that just for you today. Today, we're going to deal with not only apostleship in the body of Christ, but apostles' wives, their function, their role what they should do, how do they survive, how do they balance this great act that they must do. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Apostle Donald Graham with the Fresh Wind Show, and we are excited that you joined us again because, as we told you, we have a topic today that is so desperately needed to be touched in the body of Christ. Last week, if you joined us, I'm sure you're still bubbling from that information from Apostle Michael Long. I know we are. We are still overwhelmed about the information we learn about apostleship in the body of Christ. This week, I felt really led in my spirit to talk to those wives out there whose husbands are apostles. We understand that apostleship is a very challenging office. It requires so much commitment and time from a man of God. It is unbelievable. So for a man of God to be a husband, to be a father, and to be an apostle, it is absolutely almost impossible. Something has to lack at some point. I've learned from experience that you have to be seasonal. God would give us seasons to be fathers and seasons to be husbands. And we have to have wives that are skilled, that are wise, that are God sent in order to fulfill the role of the wife of an apostle. Today, I am overwhelmed and excited at my guest. This is the wife of Apostle Michael Long, who we had last week, and her name is Sister Evelyn Long. Come on, Sister Long, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Evelyn Long, and again, I'm married to uh, the Apostle Michael Long. We have five uh, beautiful children. Uh, we've been in ministry for about 18 years, and uh, we love it. Woman of God, that is awesome, awesome, because that's so many things also involved with being a wife of an apostle, especially the travel, the transitioning can be unbelievable. But what makes Evelyn Long so phenomenal? And I've had the great privilege of knowing them for years, and I've been so excited because her ministry to me is not only as a prophetess, because she's also a prophetess of God and is a powerful woman of God, but her ministry has just amazed me at her servitude as a woman of God. One of the first impressions I had of this woman of God, I went to their home in Florida, and me and my wife still talk about this today, because I was preaching, I think, and, and after every service, we would go to their home, which is fabulous, and she was acting like it was 12 noon in the day. <laughs> she would cook full course meals, and then take care of the kids at the same time, put them to bed, full course meal. We set up at eight, and if anybody knows Apostle Michael Long, he goes in these flows, <laughs> even at the table, it's just like being in service, because he'll start moving in the prophetic at the table, and we're sitting there mesmerized, food getting cold, and it's awesome. But what was awesome, she never flinched. We would be one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and after we got through eating, she would clean the table, spotless, cook. I mean, and then wash the dishes before we went to bed. And the very next morning, five, six o'clock, she was back up. The five kids were moving. Baths were going. Breakfast was sizzling. And I'm saying to myself, this is a prophetess of God operating like this. <laughs> My question to the woman of God, how do you do it? Apostle, I love what I do, and um, I believe I've been called and ordained and anointed and appointed by God mm. uh, to serve in that office. Mm. Uh, before I'm a prophetess, mm -hmm. before I'm a pastor, teacher, whatever title I take on, mm. I'm a servant, and mm. I love to serve. Mm. You're talking about servitude. 
I want to bring her just to teach servitude. Because one of the things we see happen to women that I know over the years I've been in ministry, I see a drop of pride and arrogance get them. Because my husband is the man of God. And then don't let them be in ministry. I see this arrogance and pride. And what's so awesome about what she said, her first move is servitude. And we lose servitude somewhere along the way. Also, she is a profound mother. How do you juggle motherhood, wifehood, pastorhood, teacherhood, prophetichood, <laughs> <laughs> all at the same? How do you balance this? It has to be the Lord okay. um, on my side and um, helping me, uh, pushing me every step of the way. Mm -hmm. I, I could not do it if I did not love the Lord. Uh-huh. That's the key, loving the Lord. Yes. Loving the Lord. And what's so beautiful, how do you keep your children so well managed? Now, I'm asking you this because we had a show about uh, how these kids are totally off the chain. And, and, and I've had mothers out there that are married women and don't work, and children are off the chain. I've seen with my own eyes your schedule. You work, manage the five kids, manage ministry, and take care of the man of God at the same time. And so your kids are so manageable. Talk to us a little bit about how you discipline your children. Well, m my children um, understand um, uh, the capacity of the work of the ministry. Uh -huh. um, so they, they're they always there to help. Okay. I have uh, three girls, mm -hmm. three boys. Mm -hmm. uh, the girls always want to um, uh, participate um, in some um, part of helping um, in whether it's preparing mm -hmm. dinner, where it's whether it's getting uh, things ready for church, mm -hmm. uh, getting things ready for uh, the prophet, they're mm -hmm. always there. Even my sons, they're mm -hmm. always asking, uh, "Mom, what can we do?" Mm -hmm. So we work together as a team. When do to you get start? The job done. When do you start informing your children? At what age do you start telling them, "Okay, we're in ministry, and this is what we do," and well, for my children, um, uh, they they came out of the womb knowing nothing but ministry. Mm. So it was already in them mm. um, when they were in the womb. Mm. So they, I believe, uh, when they came out, they already knew. Mm. That's that's incredible. <laughs> that's awesome. So they're so manageable. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm sure you do have problems out of your children. Yes. They, they do get bad, and you, you know, have to do what you have to do. Yes. Do you believe in spanking them? Yes, I do. Oh, that, you heard that, body of Christ? <laughs> we also believe in spanking your children. You spare that rod, you destroy the children. Now, I'm, I'm sharing this because we had a show about disciplining children. And how many people were into the time out movement and into the, you know, restriction movement. Mm -hmm. Anything but whooping them. Okay. So you believe whooping is very important. Uh, yes, the Bible says if you spare the rod, mm -hmm. you will spoil the child. Mm -hmm. Now, I do believe in the timeout okay. uh, method. I taught school for about 18 years. Okay. And, um, we had to use that. Okay. And sometimes I use the timeout mm. method. 